Happy Wealth Wednesday, Cam. I'm so happy and grateful to have you here. You've been a longtime friend and fan of Eve and just really appreciative of your background and some of the most foundational, fundamental elements of wealth building. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Alana, thank you. And I'm so proud of you and so excited. It's great. <laughs> if you don't mind just kicking us off with a little introduction of your journey and what you're up to now. So I work for a company called Elevest. I'm, you know, what's called a private wealth advisor. Many may know the term financial advisor. And so, you know, my focus is working with women. Elevest folk focuses on women as clients, although we love our men and they're enthusiastic and wonderful, but we focus on building generational wealth and addressing what has historically been a wealth gap between women and men, which we can talk about. I feel very lucky to have started in my business or been, been interested in this space from a very young age. You know, my, my parents talked with me about money. My mom, you know, went with me to open my first bank account my dad was the type of person or is the type of person, you know, would rather talk about, you know, the economics of an ice cream store as opposed to like why you were at the ice cream store and, you know, what you were celebrating and whatnot. So I, de I definitely had that background in high school. I was fascinated by um, global economies and how, you know, one thing happening over here impacts another thing happening over there. And so I'm clearly geeking out right now as we're like talking <laughs> supply chain and inflation and all of that sort of stuff, because it's kind of economics, you know, very much in practice. Um, in college, I was a type of student who had to work hard, but I had to work at my principles of investment class, like a, a little less hard. And so that very much resonated with me. And out of college, I was lucky to work for a bank for 10 years, um, you know, on the investment side, heavy investments, working with some of the biggest institutional investors in the world, working with some very large um, individuals. And the way I found Elevest was, you know, really seeing and understanding how kind of a, a heritage financial institution was, was put together, knowing where there may the inherent conflicts of interest in a business and where people may not be properly served and wanting to like take that knowledge and create a, a place and client experience where like we could address all those things and you know get more money into the hands of more women and invest not only for financial return but also for you know financial impact and sustainability so it, it was kind of like a bunch of a bunch of things converge converging i know that was a long way of of talking about that what was your first ever investment do you remember <laughs> yeah like you started i do and i'm going to i'm going to caveat what it was with, with, uh, it wasn't a, a real investment. It was a real investment at that time, but it, it would not be a real investment today. So I mentioned my mom, who's like, you know, just a super formative person in my life. And she, uh, took me to open up my first bank account. So like, I'll take you back to the mid nineties, like baby cam with my mom opening up my first uh, bank account to put in like tour money, lemonade, stand money, whatnot. Well, anyone would stop me. You're probably going to stop me and say, Cam, a bank account is not an investment or an investment product. And you are entirely correct. And even more correct in a day and age when inflation is running at four or 5%. But back then, uh, the Fed funds rate, so the you know global or excuse me, the national interest rate for the US economy was about 5%. So if you put your money in, you were earning annualized 5%. So I remember like being a little kid and this was when, you know, it was all paper statements and getting my paper statement every month and opening it up and being astounded by the fact that I had done nothing and my money, my money had grown, you know, by 5% on an annualized basis. So that was, that was kind of the novelty of it, which I think many of us who are doing some investing experience and especially you know, today seeing our wealth grow. So that novelty element was there. Again, I will caveat that was not a, a true in, investment and wouldn't be considered one. I think after that, my real kind of first investment vehicle was my work 401k. And I know that there are, you know, people, members of Eve doing really cool things, but I will still say like, if someone's starting, start there, right? It is 
almost as tax efficient as you can get. If you have a company match, it's free money. So that's where I started. And, you know, after many years of working, it was, um, it was a powerful savings tool. How and why did you get into your space? It sounds like there's a lot of parental influence, which is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Or like, how do you think about that? There was a, you know, there was a lot of parental influence. There was, in terms of like my focus today at LFS, there was always a feeling that like I wasn't serving a community that needed to be served. Mm -hmm. There was also a sense that, um, if, if a company, if an investment company is not building out the tools and resources that are needed, that you might not be in the right place. I have, um, you know, I have a, a sad example of this. You know, I was at a big bank during the Parkland shooting 2018. And at that time I, I had a client, you know, a mother who, who came to me and said on that day, she said, Cam, I, and we managed her investment. She said, Cam, I need to know every uh, direct and indirect gun manufacturer exposure in my portfolio. And then after we identify that, I need a plan to divest and a, and a reinvestment plan. And, you know, in terms of the things at my disposal at that time, I could probably help her with, with step one. Um, I couldn't do the rest because where I was, hadn't really invested in that infrastructure. It is truly infrastructure. Right. And if I, uh, you know, God forbid, I am ever asked that same question, but if I were asked that today, we could do that almost instantly because we have invested in those tools. So part of it too was aligning, you know, with somewhere that is, is really focused on where the narrative is going and investing for both financial impact, but also social impact. What role do you play in the wealth space and why mm -hmm. is it important? Mm -hmm. You referenced, I think when you were referencing the comment of, well, like, why does Eve exist if Elevest exists? Um, I think you referenced the term um, financial wellness, which, you know, for us and, and for you, I think we all slot right in there. And, you know, money is and continues to be, unfortunately, women's number one source of stress. Mm -hmm. So we can't live like we truly can't live our full lives and you know, focus on physical wellness, emotional wellness, spiritual wellness, relationship wellness without achieving financial wellness. Um, there, there are many descriptions of, of financial wellness. I think, you know, at its core, it's, you know, knowing what you have, knowing where you're going and, and very much feeling good about that. I know that sounds simple, but, um, you know, it's where we've got to start. Um, the interesting thing that I don't think people realize is that um, women and women in the U.S. Um, have a lot of money and have control over a lot of money. Um, you know, I've, ref I've referenced this statistic before, but we have um, decision making control like right around the equivalent of the GDP of, of China. We exclusively manage right around the GDP of Japan. We're set to inherit, let's say, 30 trillion or so dollars over the next 40 years. And we make a lot of money as a part of our professional lives. But, you know, this, this gender wealth gap exists and, and wealth is an important term, term. We always talk about the gender wage gap. It's, you know, often referenced. It's, it's what you earn as, as compared to, you know, a male counterpart. We rarely talk about, about the wealth gap, but we're very much addressing that. I think that's where we most naturally slot in. Um, and, you know, one last thing to note that comes up with a lot of my clients is financial independence. So maybe having the financial freedom to do things or having the wealth to, to not worry is not necessarily financial wellness because you may not have that agency component. So we're trying to, you know, really insert that, that agency component. What do you think is the most exciting thing that you've learned that you would want other people to know? I mean, I think what's most exciting, and you probably see see this as well, but like when you're in, investing in something, you're in, you know, you could be investing in, you know, the the equity of a company or lending to a company or owning a hard asset or earning a currency, but like the best part about it is seeing your money work in a tangible way. I remember like a really formative moment for me was riding on the New York city subway. I'm like a big subway fan and, uh, looking up and seeing like a, a company banner that I had, you know, 
invest invested in through, you know, not directly, but, you know, through some sort of structure, but seeing like that company banner on the subway. And it was like, wow, like that, like I, you know, own part of that. This is like, you know, this is very cool. So I think, um, I think just, just knowing what your money's doing, seeing what it's doing in a tangible way. I think that, um, that component of agency, which I mentioned, as well as accountability, like, so again, you know, know knowing who, who are you supporting, and there are, um, there's just like a ton of cool things happening in that space. So like, whatever excites you, there obviously has to be the return profile that's comm- comm- commensurate with the risk you're taking, but there also has to be like the exciting, like the get excited subway factor. And so is there a person or a company that's really inspiring mm-hmm. in the space right now? I think Melody Hobson's tremendous. She's also like a backer of our company and, and, but like what she's doing and her voice and how she's advocating for financial literacy is, is so powerful. I think like she is so cool and, you know, they're just, they're companies that are popping up addressing like various areas. Ella Vest through one of our relationship has got relationships has gotten to know, um, a company called Goal Setter, which is, you know, financial literacy for children. So as we're kind of addressing a, an underinvested space, which is financial wellness for women, you know, there are others focusing on that early part of the continuum, which is so important because I feel very privileged to kind of going back to having the, the mom helping me open the bank account and whatnot. But like that, you know, that doesn't exist in a lot of families and cultures. So finding ways to integrate that in a way that's, um, you know, natural and, and, you know, gets people thinking about building wealth early. And so what advice would you give to someone getting started, especially like with Alvest and what you, what you personally do, it'd be great. Maybe for people who aren't familiar of what it looks like to work with a company like Alvest, Mm -hmm. what is that process and how does that lead all the way into something like the private wealth? aspect. You know, I always say this and I apply this to my everyday life. You don't, um, you don't need to know everything, but you need to know who to ask. So a a common trait I see, especially among women, and especially when it comes to financial decision-making, although I see this pop up elsewhere is, you know, well, I'm going to like, I'm going to buy the book, you know, the the financial planning book, and I'm going to read the book and understand it. And once I know everything, then I'm going to make a decision. I don't want to make it sound like education is not important, but the problem with that narrative is the book is deeply boring. Like I'll say this from the perspective of someone who's read a number of them. And so what happens is, you know, women tend to not do it or put it off. They, they put off the kind of investment decision, whether it's an initial investment and incremental investment broadly and, or they out outsource it um, and they may outsource it to a partner or family member or whatever. You know, the issue with that is you do then lose that that personal agency, which I've talked about. In terms of getting to know Elevest, I, I mean I think the place to start is um, is probably our website or if anyone wants to chat with me, please chat with me. Um, the most powerful powerful thing about us as a company is we're really reaching women among the wealth building continuum. So f- some of our clients who, you know, invest in our dollar a month membership have never invested before. And maybe they're investing their first set of dollars. We also have um, individual clients, households, institutional clients who are investing their next set of million dollars or tens of million dollars. So um, it's really powerful to be able to work with individuals across the continuum and, and remove a lot of the barriers to entry, some of which, you know, are minimums, some of which are, you know, very niche technical language. I'm not saying we're dumbing it down, but we're recalibrating everything with a frame of reference of, you know, what are you solving for? What is the tenor? And what are you, look, uh, what is the tenor of you know, what you're trying to solve for? And what are you looking to do? Super helpful. And like, even to get to the basics, just to share so that anyone listening to this can also kind of understand what we're talking mm-hmm. about. So all this, maybe the first thing you might think of is like a robo advisor, mm-hmm. like that is alternative robo advisor where you can basically put your, you know, savings and, and invest in um, like an index product that you guys have designed that has um, 
special target variables that are relatable to women specifically, correct? Is that like the kind of step one? Of That's this? step one. And the portfolios, if you actually look at kind of in, in the, let's call it a, a robo digital portfolio, when you look under the hood, you know, a number of the, the funds and tools are recognizable. I've some sometimes had clients ask, well, you know, you're using iShares or, you know, you're using Vanguard or Fidelity or whatnot. It's like, like of course we are. Like those are the appropriate tools to be using because you get market exposure and they're low cost. But what we're doing for you is we're managing it in a way where we're kind of shifting that allocation based on what you're trying to solve for. That could be, you know, your next home, that could be your child's education, that could be that, you know, get out of this job and, and travel for your goal. And, you know, we're rebalancing it as the markets move around and whatnot, which, you know, may sound simple, but as we've seen in, in the last, you know, couple of years or so, it's, it's not simple. So that's the, um, you know, that's very much the digital investment portfolio, which is, which is tremendous. And then on the private wealth side, we have the capacity to expand those tools a bit um, because a, a number of our clients are, you know, accredited investors and beyond. So, so kind of the, the swath of things they can invest in is, you know, as, as per law and regulation is a little broader. So that may be private real estate, venture capital, private lending. It, it kind of spans the gamut. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying and sharing that. Yeah. I think that's something that I do find really inspiring about Elvis is that the actual algorithm that goes behind the products that are selected on the more digital product are actually tailored to women, right? Like longer lifespans and certain mm -hmm. things that we know to be true that may not be incorporated in other, you know, robos, for example. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. And is there anything else that we should know? How can we keep in touch with you, what you're doing, what you're working on? Talks. Oh, yeah. He's doing some really interesting talk, which I love. Oh, thank you. So cool. Um, yes, um, we'll check us out, check Elevest out. We are on everything <laughs> We're we're on, uh, we have our website on elevest.com and you can find both kind of membership and private wealth there. We're on Instagram. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. I think one of our funniest claims to fame is we have sort of the largest or broadest social media profile of any financial services company, which is like the lowest bar to be. It's like the lowest of the low bars to be. We're proud of it. Our founder and CEO, Sally Krawcheck, is a total powerhouse. I would say follow her on Instagram and probably LinkedIn. You know, if this group has any questions, please email me, crogers at lms.com. But yeah, you can you can find us via via multiple avenues and, and on the Eve platform. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much, Cam. Always such a pleasure. And we'll definitely be following along. I think you've had just some really great talks, especially when things are happening in the market. So I've always really appreciated jumping into those. And yeah, just so grateful for you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alana.